Well, welcome. I'm Patrick Hansen. I'm the director of opera studies at the Schulich School of Music at McGill University. And I'd like to introduce a very special guest who has been with us for the past couple of weeks, Nicola Bowie. Hello. So uh, Nicola is a choreographer. Nicola is also a stage director. Um, and for the last uh, number of years, you've been doing productions all over the world. Uh, where were you last? At my last production was in Seattle, Washington, and I was choreographing a production of Rigoletto, which was set in 1930s fascist Italy. And so the demands of uh, choreographically of that production were very different from this, in that I had to do a quick step, a foxtrot, a tango. Oh, wow. Um, and of course, the ladies were wearing fabulous heels and sexy dresses, and uh, rather different from today's uh, experience. Yes, that's that's true because this piece, um, as if you've been watching, is set in Raj, India, pre World War One, and the the movement and the style of the piece, the inspiration for the costumes, uh, also the set, and my concept as a stage director is all coming from that period and so as a choreographer when a stage director says I would love to have you come in and, and do some choreography and then they say uh, the the fairies are Hindu deities and um, what, what goes through your head? <laughs> well initially I thought what a lovely idea and then I thought oh dear I haven't had much training in Indi Indian classical dance so I need to bone up on that and as I've been on the road for quite a long time and didn't uh, have access to my library um, I had to fall back on the wonderful invention of YouTube and there are several how to do uh, Indian classical dance segments on YouTube <laughs> and so in my hotel room both in Geneva which was actually the job before Seattle and uh, Seattle I started studying Indian classical dance and obviously this is a lifetime uh, undertaking which uh, I didn't have the time for but the role really of a choreographer in opera when one is usually working with singers um, sometimes dancers as well but in this case obviously just singers and young singers is to find um, movements really that immediately suggest to the audience that they are watching the real thing um, and in this case obviously um, Indian classical dancing uses the hand movements, particularly for the women, um, various different hand movements. And so when I came here, um, I started really, particularly with the girls, um, on using the hands in order to give them a feeling that they were doing the real thing. Um, so you've been working with our students now for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was wondering your thoughts on uh, you know, the differences between working with professional singers and young st singers who are still trying to learn their craft, um, and also as opposed to working with uh, professional dancers. I mean. Well, obviously the difference between singers and dancers is huge, <laughs> uh, because sadly, although I have to say in institutions like uh, Opera McGill, um, they are getting more training in dance. They don't really get enough, in my view. And as in life, there are young singers and very experienced singers who have, uh, who are more physically challenged, shall I say, than um, others are. And so in that situation, you really have to have a great deal of patience. Uh, Which you, you have in spades. And thank you so much. You have to build their confidence. Um, and as I say, it, it really doesn't matter in terms of experience or age. Uh, having worked at major opera houses across the world, it's exactly the same. You have singers who love it and actually you know, really embrace it and give you so much back and, mm -hmm. and others who don't. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that surprising in this day that the, like, at the professional level, sometimes you'll find people who, who, who do not want to Yes. Move or do anything? I mean. You do. It is surprising and it's frustrating, I have to say. Because <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think if they had been trained earlier on, you know, they would love it. They would have grown to love it. And mm -hmm. it actually helps the voice, I find. Often it releases the voice um, if they suddenly are using it. That is if, of course, it's been well choreographed. Yes. 
Yes. And which, of course, in this case. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliantly yes, choreographed, yes. yes. <laughs> um, so uh, we, we basically, in A Midsummer Night's Dream, there are uh, two very large dances and then sort of two kind of small dances that mm -hmm. happen. One uh, with Bottom when he's with the fairies and then uh, one with the king and queen of the fairies, Oberon and Titania. But then there is the lullaby that the fairies dance at the end of Act One. Mm -hmm. And then there's the very exciting Bergamask dance, which is in Act Three, which is extensive mm -hmm. dance. I mm -hmm. mean, um, it's extensive simply because of the amount of time that it takes. Mm -hmm. um, however, the fairy dance, you were remarking earlier um, the other day about how it's actually very technically challenging for the girls. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Basically because, um, as opposed to the Bergamask, which is really a peasant dance, and so they can afford to be a little rougher and less accurate in their movements. <laughs> and they do that really well sometimes. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> they do, although they work very hard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, Indian classical dance, of course, requires great precision in terms of angle, in terms of head movement, in terms of the hands. And we have eight fairies, and they all have to be doing the same thing at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're unused to doing that, generally, I would say, to, to this degree. But they have risen to the challenge, and I'm very, very proud of them. Yes. And they have to sing while, they're do, while they uh, do this, too. Absolutely. You know, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's been a thrill for me to have Nicola here. Also, uh, a thrill to have our uh, guest conductor, Andrew Bizantz, working with the students. The, what they've learned has just been tremendous and uh, made the production so special. I hope uh, those of you viewing at home think the same thing and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much.